gentlemen, this was undeniably a determined march to meet the aspirations of the great Egyptian people back in 1952. And today, 67 years later, the same determination was the driving force behind the June 30th revolution of 2013, awakening another political and social and economic rejuvenation in Egypt. Back on track, Egypt, under the leadership of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, made significant strides towards achieving a competitive, diversified, and knowledgeable, and knowledge-based economy, characterized by justice, social integration, and participation. An irreversible path governed by the rule of law and based on a transparent form of government with genuine checks and balances and social justice at heart. Dear guests, while Egypt is pursuing this journey of transformation, Egyptians are fully determined to confront the ugly scourge and evil of terrorism. Not only to uproot this phenomena from our homeland, but also to eradicate it from our region and the entire world in cooperation with our partners. Such determination is deeply rooted by a strong belief in the importance of applying a holistic approach that goes beyond the necessary military and security actions to integrate ideological and socio-economic aspects. This was the essence behind the Egyptian president's initiative to encourage inter-religious dialogue, renew religious discourse, and review educational curricula to spread the values of tolerance and coexistence and fight extremism in all its manifestations. Friends of Egypt, 65 years have passed since the launch of the diplomatic relations with Canada, an established partnership based on mutual respect, common interests, and shared values. Over decades, bilateral relations between Canada and Egypt have evolved into a partnership from which both countries derive mutual benefits. For Canada, Egypt plays an important role as a beacon of peace and stability in the region and is appreciated for its leading effort in the face of the rising tide of terrorism. Equally, Egypt recognizes Canada's international stature as a reliable partner in development and a strong advocate for the values of justice, equality, rule of law, and a promoter of stability in the Middle East since the legacy of its intervention in the Suez Crisis in 1956. Common interests have also steered our bilateral relations. Both countries maintain constant coordination on the bilateral and multilateral levels, particularly on issues related to the Middle East and Africa region, and combating terrorism, and advancing support for our African brethren, especially during Egypt's current presidency of the chairman of the African Union. In place is a mechanism for annual political consultations between foreign ministries of both countries a mechanism that provides ample opportunities for information sharing and policy coordination. Also, there is a huge potential for further growth in Egypt's Canada economic relations, including trade that has been growing at a steady pace, amounting to $1.2 billion in 2017. Canadian firms has also, have also sizable investments in Egypt, amounting to $2 billion. And I want to con congratulate Bombardier for its latest winning of the bid to build and supply the new monorail system that will link the city of Cairo to the new administrative capital. Education is another area of synergy between our countries. The Canadian education system continues to attract Egyptian students rapidly, and Canadian institutions continue to open branches in Egypt. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been in Canada for nine months now. Yet, it is very apparent that the Egyptian community, which we believe has exceeded 300,000, is well woven in the Canadian fabric. They are the true ambassadors of Egypt. We have Egyptian Canadians contributing to the Canadian political arena, and in a wide variety of sectors, ranging from academia to information technology to health and economics. A source of pride, as it represents a notable example of how immigrant populations can truly create a better life for themselves, their homeland, and the society in which they live. 
and I wish to recognize the presence of a number of prominent Canadian Egyptians with us tonight, including Her Worship Doreen Assad, mayor of the city of Brossard. She is the first Canadian from Egyptian origin to be elected as a mayor in Canada. Thank you. <laughs> The Egyptian government has been cognizant of the importance of engaging Egyptians abroad and in supporting transformation undergoing at home. And I look forward to future participation of the Egyptian community in Canada in shaping the future of the new Egypt we aspire for. Dear guests, looking ahead, there is a great potential in pushing Egyptian-Canadian cooperation to a new horizon. There is a high degree of convergence in our interests that we will seek to exploit while opening up new vistas of bilateral cooperation. We will continue to support initiatives that enhance people-to-people -people exchanges, whether between academics, professionals, youth, artists, entrepreneurs, or through the formation of an Egypt-Canada friendship group at the Parliament, and more other ideas. We are extremely proud to have recently hosted Honorable George Fury, the Speaker of the Canadian Senate in Cairo a visit that provided a milestone for the renewed high-level engagement between both countries. Ladies and gentlemen, building bridges also entail more cultural events, showcasing cultural heritage of Egypt as the cardinal of civilization and the land of peace. We are pleased to announce the performance of the Egyptian National Folkloric Troupe on July 16th at the Canadian Museum of History. Such an ambitious plan cannot be materialized without the support of the Friends of Egypt in Canada and the Friends of Canada in Egypt. Our diplomatic efforts should extend well beyond our conventional foundations to strengthen our relations with the objective of bringing greater, greater prosperity to our people and peace and security for our world. I thank you all for the kind attention and I invite you.